Shepard. It is my pleasure to introduce you to one of the most eligible men in America. His name is Stevie Bag. I played football for 10 years. I'm at a point where I'm ready to find my wife. We're introducing him to 18 eligible women from all across America. And they'll hold nothing back when it comes to fighting for their man. Oh, ouch. Living with all these women is Stevie's mom. I don't feel like you're marriage material. I'm the gatekeeper. And if you want to take part in this investment, you got to come see me, bottom line. Hearts on the line every step of the way. The twists, the turns, the temptation. Biting one of these apples will bring Stevie's date to an unexpected end. Can we get out of here? Oh, man. This is a love story like no other. He makes me want to share a lifetime with him. You got to hold on me. I'm ready to leave here as Mrs. and finish this life with you. I love you. Who finds love? And who has to accept the heartbreak as we make a match made in heaven? The new season of Match Made in Heaven premieres Thursday, May 19th at 10 on WeTV. Make some noise for him, make some noise. <laughs> Miss Sherry Shepard and Mr. Stevie Bags, how's it going today? Hi, everybody. So excited to be here. Yes, absolutely. Excited, excited. Smooth talker already. He already getting started. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get started. How did you get? How did you get become involved with this project, Stevie? Well, I had a, a one of my friends was connected to the production company and just made some some real small calls and turned into a really big opportunity. And see, I knew that you guys wanted to do some rebranding with this season. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit, Sherry? Yes, we wanted to do some rebranding um, because I was not involved with Match Made in Heaven d with the first season, and they came to me. Uh, to be involved with them, to executive produce with them for the second season, and to host. And if anybody ever watched me on The View, I, thank you, girl, the one person. Thank you. <laughs> that one person also voted for me on Dancing with the Stars. Thank you so much, girl. You look good, by the way. <laughs> um, when I was on The View and Elizabeth Hasselbeck would always talk about The Bachelor, I was always very vocal because I felt, why don't they have a Bachelor of Color? on the show. Every season I would watch and there was no Bachelor of Color. There'd be somebody, there'd be a black man or a black woman and they always got voted off like very early on in the show. And I'm like, people wanna see Chocolate Yummy as well. You know, we, there's an audience for that. And when they asked me to partner up with them, I, I said, let me put my money where my mouth is. And I partnered up with them and I'm so excited about this show. One of the things that I wanted was I wanted more women who were a little bit older, who had a foundation up under them. And they're not your grandmother, your, you know, your auntie. They're just a little bit older. They have, we have a, a woman who owns two day spas. We have an international model. We have a lawyer. We have a woman who owns her own PR firm. We have a, a dancer who is, she's a background dancer for Beyonce. Say. So we have some women who are doing. This is we're doing some. Sherry, things. as if my as if my choice was not hard enough. <laughs> you went and got all these viable we women. Got all of these viable women, and, and it's a diverse cast of women. It's not yeah. just black women. It's it's very very diverse. But and we found a really good guy named Stevie Bags, who's a retired CFL NFL player. He's got a ton of businesses. He loves God. He loves his mama, and he was looking for a lovely lady to be in his life. So I. I love this man right here. He's I love so you too, wonderful. Sherry. Thank Look you. Look at that. I love that chemistry already. Now, Stevie, you're a successful businessman. Now, you're a Southern brother like myself, God-fearing. Now, why is it so difficult to find a woman down in Atlanta, Georgia? Oh, ho, you're going to get me in trouble in the A, man. I, you know, I think, I think we're, we're living in a world of materialism. We're living in a world where, where you know, a lot of things are, are just an illusion, a facade. And um, when people want something real, um, I think realness reflects itself. And so I think it's difficult to find that in a world where you think you have to be something that you're not, right? And, 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 and at this point in my life, you know, I don't have time to play the games of oh, I'm this or that or a woman that's just um, beautiful but doesn't have a disposition that matches that, doesn't have drive, doesn't have ambition. And, and, and you know, at this point in life, uh, for me, 
it's important to, to be around all people in any relationship that's uh, mutually reciprocal. What have you found in your previous relationships that you're trying to change now for to be a better man today? Well, you know, I often say this. I'm not flawless, but I'm faithful. You know, and I'm faithful not to. Oh, he a smooth what? talker. Faithful? He is a smooth talker. Hey, yeah. Hey, spell it, spell it. <laughs> hey, look, we'll get on that later. Anyway, no, I'm not flawless, but I'm faithful. And true, true, truly not faithful to any man, woman, boy, or girl necessarily, but more faithful to my purpose. And I think if more of us as people are faithful to our purpose, then you'll in turn be faithful to other people and, and you'll treat people right. And I think we have to spread more of a, of a universal message of love. And I think that's one thing that we're missing overall. So when people are like, oh, you're looking for love. Yeah, I'm looking for love, but I'm looking for love in every area of my life, you know, and I want people to uh, exude that. Now, Sherry, you play the, the god mom here in this, this yeah, they, series. Yeah, they call me Sherry, Sherry Godmother. Sherry Godmother? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Now, what can you tell about, well, what can you provide for Stevie uh, in your past experiences and help him out in the future? Well, you know, everything I just asked Stevie, we have 18 very, you know, beautiful women vying for his heart. At, but I said, you know, Stevie, as a woman, can you please treat their hearts tenderly? You know, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, the, the ladies were on there, they were looking for love. I think we all, in our mind, we want that Prince Charming. We want that, that man that's going to sweep us off our feet. And uh, I just said, just treat him, just, just treat them tenderly. That's all I wanted. But although I did give him some, try to, with my eyes, I tried to go, no, 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 yeah. no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know if he got it or not. <laughs> well, I, oh, I got it. I got it. For sure. <laughs> But we also, what's different uh, about our show, Match Made in Heaven, is we had his mother come on the show. We had Stevie's mom because, you know, I have a son, and I, I hope that he would listen to me, at least take some of my advice. And so we had his mom, Lola, who was very feisty and beautiful. Look, Lola looks like his sister. And the women thought that she was a production assistant. So she actually went undercover because she wanted to see who had character, who had integrity. So, you know, sometimes when you don't think anybody around, is around, you act one way. And these ladies didn't know that was his mama when they were doing certain things until she came out later, you know, when we had our elimination night. So I love that aspect. And we also have a pastor on the show, Pastor Ken. He's a chaplain. For, yeah, the, for the Colts, for the Indiana Colts. Colts. Oh, nice. So I knew, I, I already knew who he was. We were familiar with one another. Yeah, so he counseled of Stevie. I'm sorry, I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt you. He counseled Stevie and he counseled some of the women because we really, really wanted to find uh, a perfect woman for Stevie. Do you think you found her? You have to watch the show. <laughs> you have to watch the show. You know that. Okay. But I, 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 I know I made a wonderful choice, and we've decided not to um, share, you know, our relationship at this point. But I made a wonderful choice, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the woman that I chose. So thanks to WeTV, they actually put the first episode up on the website already. And so I was watching, and I saw that I had a friend on there. Oh! Yes. Oh, it was. Oh, oh you went to Howard. Yeah, I went to Howard. You know. You go to Howard? Yeah. Oh, I know who your friend was. Oh, Lord. It's about to get good, people. It's about to get yes. good. Yes, and, and look, I got to make a quick plug for HBCU. <laughs> I, I went to Bethune-Cookman University, and so shout out to HBCU. Shout out to the HBCU. Norfolk State. Norfolk State. Yeah, yeah, we're State, in the building. Norfolk. yes. So that was me segueing into what is your type? Wow. So I used to have a type, right, back in the day. I just You just had to be pretty, and we could let it ride. But now... <laughs> No, she I found I'm out just, you didn't eat, did you? Because no, she couldn't cook. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, see? You know, if she don't have crackers and ginger ale in the house, if I get sick, and, what are we going to do? And you found out she was a little crazy, didn't you? <laughs> uh-huh. No, no. In, in all honesty, I've always wanted a woman, like I said before, whose beauty matched her disposition both inside and out. But also a woman who had a faith in something greater than her. And I think um, having a woman that's ambitious and just super conscious of herself and others, um, those qualities or qualities that you can't go without in my humble opinion because when it's after the euphoria of a relationship you have to be friends with these people you have to you know these people yeah you, you yeah I'm, I'm just saying people have relationships uh, oh, so okay. I'm, you know you know <laughs> how people you are, it's funny you know how people say wifey and women that are the wife get mad. Don't call me wifey. I'm, I am the one wife, baby. I'm talking about you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I calm down. <laughs> no, but you have to have you. You really have to be friends with your mate, your companion, your partner. And when it's all said and done, you have to get past the euphoria of it to really know that after you squeeze a person, that's when you find out what's inside. 
Hey, y'all hear this man? He is good. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, ladies, this is what we went through. There was one without even giving it away, the, the ladies, because I would come in and I would try to encourage the women. And, you know, it, because it is, a, it is still a competition show. So it is, you know, women formed alliances and there were women who were just like, you know, I want that one out. And uh, I would come in and encourage and, and, and keep them going. And there was one, Stevie is so, he's such a good heart, but he, he puts his foot down. And one, the ladies were mad at him because he took somebody else on a second date because she just really made an impression. And those ladies found out and they were hot. <laughs> and I said to them, I said, well, you, because I stir up stuff. I'm like, well, you need to go confront Stevie and let him know how you feel. And I fired them up and they were ready on elimination night. I was like, you open. So it up. was all your fault, huh? Yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> and I was, I was like, let, let him know. You, you get, hold his feet to the fire. And they got out there and Stevie must have sensed something. And he gave a lecture and he was just like, I need a woman who's going to know that I'm around different people every day and what I do. And if you can't fit that bill, then I don't know if I want you for a wife. And they were like, hey. <laughs> and I was like, what? What happened? What? You, you, what, 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 what about the one that was doing this? Are you gonna? She's like, I just don't still in love. I, and I love Stevie. He just, he was not playing around. He said, I'm here looking for a woman who's going to stand beside me. That just makes people melt. Well, I think in addition to that, a lot of people say, say what they want, but when you're in, right. in a situation where you're with a mate or woman, man, woman, who is busy, who's always right. traveling. Yeah. You're like, man, hold up, I didn't sign up for this. You're never home, you're always on the grind, but they have to know the full you before they you know, get into it. And so that's now, now you have 18 women on the show, and Sherry, I want you to chime in on this. Do you <laughs> think, even if he finds the one from this show, do you think he can be faithful to that one woman? Is, is there a faithful man out there? Uh, you know, and this is coming from a woman who's been divorced twice. I absolutely do. Yes, I absolutely unequivocally say yes. There are faithful men out there. Just because you get uh, a bad apple or two, you know, there are, um, there, that doesn't mean that everybody is bad. And there are very faithful men and there are very good men. And I have to say, uh, I just got a phone call the other day from somebody who was like, I know Stevie and I'm waiting to hear, okay, what? And she was like, he is the sweetest man I've ever met. He was so wonderful, he was so honest. I really, truly love Stevie because I feel like he is, he's very honest about what he's doing, who is in his life, uh, about his daughter, and he tells you what he needs and what he wants. So I, I have a, a great deal of respect for Stevie. We got a really good, we got a really good guy. Thank you, Sherry. I, I pay her to say that, y'all, by the way. <laughs> no, uh, I, I really appreciate those sentiments. Um, I do think that there's faithful men in the world, and, and I could be faithful to a woman. I think being equally yoked goes far beyond having a good job and, you know, you're pretty and your hand, you know, it, it goes far beyond that. We have to pay attention to the details of the situation. Right. And I think once you do that, um, you, your relationship can transcend. Now, Sherry, this isn't the only melanin-infused brother that you star in the show with. Uh, you're also on Rosewood on Fox. Talk about some of the other things that you're involved yes, in. Yes, I'm on Rosewood. I have a recurring role on Rosewood with Morris Chestnut as the star, and I play Dr. Anita Eubanks. I'm the medical examiner. But what I most love about that role is they wrote it every episode I get to squeeze Morris Chestnut. <laughs> it, literally. I'm not doing this on my own. Every episode it is written, Anita touches Rosie. Anita hugs Rosie. And literally, sometimes Morris will say, you need to do this, you need to like hug me tighter. You need to put your arm on me. And I'm like, well, you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> so, and he's so shy, ladies. Morris Chestnut takes his shirt off. He's so shy, which makes him even more sexy. And he loves his wife, which makes him even sexier. So, um, so yes, I am the, the, uh, I'm recurring on there. And it, it's a very funny part, which I love. And I'm also, uh, I'm headlining, I do stand-up comedy, so I'm headlining at the Venetian this Saturday in Vegas. So I tell everybody, come to Vegas. What goes Give on it up for Sherry. Give it up for Sherry. Yeah. Yes. 
And I have a new show coming out on NBC. Let's talk about it. I have a new show coming out on NBC. They, I just found out they just picked it up. It's with starring John Lithgow. And uh, he's it's a dark comedy. He's accused of murdering his wife. And I'm uh, on his legal defense team. It's in a little quirky town. Uh, I play his receptionist legal intern and paralegal. I have five disorders. I have prosopagnosia, which is facial blindness. I have facial blindness. I have short-term memory loss. I was born with no tear ducts. I have inappropriate emotional responses. So whenever we talk about John Lithgow's murder, I start laughing hysterically, and I'm dyslexic. So wow. I have, <laughs> and I'm on his legal defense team, so I can never recognize him five minutes after he leaves. So it, it, to play this ca character that was so challenging as an actor, I loved it, and it just got picked up as a mid-season on NBC. So I'm excited. Give it up. That. That's an exclusive right there. Now tell me, how did you how did how did you go about? Uh, receiving that role and actually auditioning for it, or if you did? I didn't have to audition for it, which I have to say is, I think people, even though I've done The View for seven years, people know me as an actress and they know my work. I was on the last season of How I Met Your Mother. I played Tracy Morgan's wife on 30 Rock. Thank you. Ham! Um, <laughs> Like I'm in the grocery store and people go, can you say, can you say the ham, ham, ham? Um, it's like one of the lines I had on 30 Rock. And, uh, and, and so I think they knew my work and they were fans of mine already. So when they wrote the part, they had me in mind for the um, part. And so when they told me they also were talking to John Lithgow, I said, that's something I want to be involved in because John Lithgow doesn't sign his name to anything that he doesn't think is a, is a home run. So. Now, so I kind of want to go back to how you got started in the entertainment industry as a comedian going through the comedy circuit. Can you talk about that? Were you in New York or were you in Chicago? I was in L.A. I started stand-up comedy with a man named Jamie Foxx. You guys may know him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, one of the guys who I was, Jamie Foxx used to stay on my couch uh, when he didn't have any money. He still owes me $50 because he got a haircut. And he was going on a, he was going on this audition called In Living Color, and he didn't have money to get a haircut. I don't know if you know this show. And um, uh, the, uh, one of the other guys I started with, he didn't have any money. He was a struggling comic. Um, Chris Tucker. His, I don't know if y'all know him. Chris She's dropping names like it's just nobody, right? <laughs> and there was another girl. She was just struggling, trying to do her thing. Her name was Monique. We started. And then Kim Whitley. And um, then uh, Cat Williams stayed at my house for a little bit. Then I was like, you crazy. Um, <laughs> But those are You're all not of these. Even go there. <laughs> D. L. Hughley was. We all were in the struggle together. That's who I started with. In in the Rodney Perry. Those were all of the guys that I started with at the very beginning, back in 1993. I auditioned 23 times to be a regular at the Comedy Store. Mitzi Shore had a place called the Comedy Store. I had to audition 23 times, and every time you can't let no bother you. No to me means. I turn it around, it, it spells on. And I go, it's on. I'm going to show you that I can do it or surpass what you think when you say no to me. So 23 times I auditioned before she made me a regular. So if you go past the comedy store, my name is up above. It's like near uh, Richard Pryor's name on the comedy store. So that's how it started, was in, with stand-up. Now, speaking of persistence, Stevie, you, had a, a, you didn't have a traditional route going into the NFL, CFL. Can you talk about that and how persistent you had to be to just work on your craft and building your craft? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was a three-time All-American, very highly celebrated out of Bethune-Cookman. I was the Black College Player of the Year. So I won the same award as Jerry Rice, Walter Payton, Michael Strahan, just to name a few. And uh, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was on my way. $100 million football career. But the creator had another plan for me, and I, I'm the only pro football player to play on 11 teams in 10 years. So I played on five NFL, five CFL, one arena team, uh, which led me uh, to great, I guess, character building and life lessons that I'm able to now take with me beyond the game, which I wrote, I wrote a book called Greater Than the Game, which is a principle-based book to help people find out what their worth is beyond whatever game you're in. You know, my true belief is that if your worth is based on your bank account or your occupation only, you'll always be broke or broken because money's going to come and go and your occupation can come and go. But the true gift that the creator has given each and every one of us, that's what we have to cultivate and, and then share. And so for me, um, being greater than the game, um, I have an acronym for it. It's gathering amongst man every day. We gather amongst man every day, but do we spread love? Do we use our gift or are we just uh, making excuses to not be great? in our everyday lives. And so the, the, the trials and tribulations and the adverse moments that I learned in football 
um, turned into an advantage. My test turned into testimony. Mess turned into message. Struggle into strength. Lesson to lesson. Tragedy into triumph. Turmoil, tranquility. And as poetic as that is, it's real life because you've never heard a success story without someone saying, man, I've been through the valley before they got to the mountaintop. So that's what, you know, NFL and CFL did for me. I like this brother. He's good. Didn't I tell you? What? I see, I see why they chose you. Now, one question I ask any celebrity of, or anybody with some level of success, what is your advice to anyone that wants to be where you are today separately? Wow. Um, success is very important. It's just like wisdom. A lot of people ask for it, but when you get it, can you handle it? And then the other part of it is stewardship. A lot of people want a Bentley. You have Bentley entitlement, but you have Honda Civic stewardship. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't go hand in hand. So, you, you, you know, you have to be very, very careful what you ask for because you're going to get it. But are you going to be the one hit wonder that's at the mountain or are you going to be the one that, that, that transcends and stays at the mountaintop or helps another person get to the mountaintop? So success to me means that, being true to yourself. And when you go to sleep at night, um, when you're looking in the mirror, what's looking back at you, having peace. And then in the morning, having joy. That's what it means to me. And Cheryl, what about you? I guess I would say my life mantra is run towards the very thing that you fear because there are amazing blessings on the other side. I think everything in my life, um, doing the view, that was something that scared me. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness and we didn't vote uh, because we didn't believe in, in the voting process. We, you know, they, we don't like confrontation or debating, which is everything I had to do every day on The View, and it scared me. Literally, when they would say, welcome the ladies of The View, I, I was like, okay, I need a bucket, I got an upchuck. I'm, <laughs> this is so scary, but the doors that opened for me from doing something that scared me every day, even failing, failing is great. I got on The View the first week, I said I didn't know if the earth was round or flat, because I was so nervous, and I got adult ADD, and I was trying to figure out how I was gonna pay my cable bill, and I didn't hear a question from Whoopi of if the earth was round or flat. And it, it was like I was the most talked about. I was the second most Google person in the nation. Everybody said I should be fired. Bill Maher, Bill Riley said I was a pinhead of the week. It was awful. Wendy, Wendy Williams said a potato sack could replace me. I cried. It hurt. But when you fail, it makes you go and do something. You know, it made me learn about politics. I can talk politics with anybody now because of that failure. And so, it, you know, Barbara Walters' belief in me, it opened up so many doors to do so many things, to meet so many wonderful people. I found out Bill Clinton watched me in a movie called Who's Your Caddy? He said, that's my, I love that movie. I watched it three times. You know, he sent me a letter saying he was voting for me on Dancing with the Stars. You know, I got to meet President, my, my son got to meet President Obama three times. So much so that he was like, I don't want to take a picture. I was like, you better get on his lap. <laughs> Put your arm around my son. He fine. He fine. Don't even, you don't thank me for this picture. Um, but it, it just, and that was because I did something. I said yes to something that scared me. So I said run towards the very thing, that little knot in your stomach when you feel it. Say yes. Now I want to open up the uh, floor to some questions down from the audience. You guys have any questions? So um, <laughs> I had a question, but you are seemingly an amazing guy, and whatever this show has, I'm sure it's going to work out. Um, I was going to say to you when you when you mentioned something about ham. So all my friends call me Ham. Okay. So hopefully you don't mind that I tell them that you are really shouting me out. I am Ham. I right? love you, Ham. Right? Everybody loves Ham. ham. <laughs> you and you got to do that because literally Prince, my memory of Prince, he was on the View, and I told Prince, "Can you just tell me you love me?" And he looked at me. And he said, "I love you, Sherry." Now then, I don't care that I had to tell him to tell me. That ain't none of my business. He, I get to tell people. Prince said to me. He loved me. So, shoot. Ham, that's to you. We have one more. Sherry, Stevie, thank you so much for being here. Sherry, your energy always resonates with everybody. My family <laughs> loves you. Oh, thank um, you. I guess because you guys are giving out so much good advice, for all the single people out there, what's the best relationship tip you could give out to Prenup. people who are looking? <laughs> Prenup. Let the church say amen <laughs> to that one. I'm just, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'd like to just jump in on that one and say really quickly, too. Um, 
you have to first love yourself before you can love anybody else. So I have an acronym for FLY. It's first love yourself. And then the acronym, when you're flying, you're really taking air. And so there's a word called AIR. But if you have access, influence, and resources, um, and you're grinding in that by yourself, you can never transcend. Like if she has resources but no influence, what does it do? If you have influence but you don't have access to anything. So in order to really have true love, in my humble opinion, you have to first love yourself in order to connect with someone else to take air. And I would also say, that is great, all those acronyms. I like that. Thank you. Like, air. I never thought of air. Um, but I also <laughs> say, you know, get yourself together. Whatever you're looking for in that person, make sure you're together as well. But it's okay, be, it's okay being, um, being happy in the space that you're in for the season that you're in that space. Enjoy. Don't. I know a lot of single people who are just waiting for that person to come. And I'm like, no, travel. Buy that house. Do that thing that you've always wanted to do. And be, and be really great in that space that you're in for the season that you're in. And prenup. <laughs> Don't forget it. Oh, hello, you two. You guys are very inspiring. Steve, I just got to say, I thought I was smooth, but I, I need to learn something from you, man. Hey, man, I'm, we're going to hold class after this, so you can go in. You know, no. I, definitely, I would definitely like to learn at the hands of the master, all right? <laughs> oh, and uh, my question to you is that I wanted to know what was it like uh, dating, uh, like what, what was the thing you learned the most from dating 18 different women? Well, I... <laughs> You, you learn everything from women because women are the strongest thing on the earth. That's why it's called Mother Earth. So I got to say that first. But I learned that, you know, when you have a genuine connection with people, no matter if it's on television or not, it's difficult to let them go. You know, because I'm dealing with 18 women that are viable women, like we said before. These women aren't just like models looking for the next best deal. These, these ladies have family, business, they have good things going on, so they're real. And so when you're dealing with real people in a real situation, that was the most disheartening thing was that I had to let, let them go. And I, and I learned- You had to what, break up with somebody every week. Every week, oh. yeah, you know, and then what, what I learned from that was very similar to football. You know, in, in football, you're not as good as your last game, you're only as good as your last play, especially in the NFL. And so these women, their time with me and our, our intimate moments together, they had to make something happen. They had to make a play because after that, you know, I had to move on to the next, next lady. All right, we have one final question. Hello, how are you guys doing? Hi. Oh, I just went and had some relationship advice I wanted you guys to give me. So, you know, in relationships, they say you shouldn't compromise or you should compromise. I wanted to know for each of you from a male and a female's perspective, what is one thing that a male or a female should not compromise in a relationship? One thing that a, a, a person should, I think your values, I think what you really believe in, you shouldn't compromise on that um, because then you're always going to be holding back and you're always going to be suppressing. I think that was one of the, the issues that I had was I said, you know, I, I compromise a lot of things that I believed in. Uh, it, with mine, I remember nobody in my family, everybody in my family hated this person that I was going to marry. All of my friends, if it walked like a duck, talk like a duck, I still was like, yeah, but it's a Labrador. You guys don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and, and one thing they kept saying is, this is Sherry. This is not what you believe in. This is not you. This is not. And so you can't give in to a fear. You got to, I think you have to stand strong on, on your belief, your belief system. Absolutely. I, I, I'd say something similar, which is don't compromise your consciousness. Mm. You know, to me, the root word to conscious, I have a root word oh, for it. Oh. You know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna break it down real quick <laughs> to the lowest common denominator, Sherry. <laughs> no, it's science, but science is something that we think of, but it's also functional. So when you connect science to your everyday life, it's your consciousness. So don't, don't, don't ever compromise your consciousness because that's the energy and vibration that you know is true. Is what I'm saying. So you have a spirit of discernment and you know that, man, I'm not supposed to be in this situation or I am. And it feels right. And then you just do it because you have to live your life because without living life, you don't have a, a lesson to share with other people on what you can and can't do or they can and can't do. So that's what I would say. But I don't have an acronym, Sherry, <laughs> for that one. Well, my like consciousness, that's a long acronym. <laughs> <Right>. Consciousness. <laughs> Well, myself, on behalf of A.O. Bill, I would like to thank Sherry Shepard and Stevie Bax for coming through today. I, I like the thank conversation. You. It was good. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Appreciate it, brother. And, and listen, I have, a gift, I have a gift for you. 
and for Thank two you. people in the audience. So this is a copy of my book, Great in the Game. Let's get and then out. we have two people. I'll let you guys choose who to give it to, Cameron. There you Thank go, man. You. And come see me in Vegas. If you single, come to Vegas and see me. I'll buy you some drinks. Give you a ticket. This Saturday, May 21st at the Venetian, I'm headlining in the Lipstick right. Comedy Tour. Thursday, May 19th.